I'm Jason Holbrook, sales manager for Absolute High TN, and thank you for joining us for our video series titled The Complete Guide to Sizing Injection Molding Machines. This is part three, sizing the injection unit. In our introductory video, we touched on the fact that the injection unit is often an afterthought and that there's so much to consider. Things like material types, fillers, molded shot size, the cycle time, the residence time, the injection pressure, screw recovery time, and the screw geometries. A very common misunderstanding uh, that we get approached with and often asked is, my total part weight is 100 ounces. Does this mean I need a 100 ounce shot? No. So let's look at some of the common rules of thumb that you should use. Considering the max shot size of any given injection unit, general purpose resins like polypropylene, polyethylene, and polystyrene will run anywhere from 20 to 80% of your shot capacity, whereas Engineered resins like ABS, polycarbonate, POM, nylons will run somewhere between 30 and 50% of your shot capacity. So what happens if you overutilize your injection unit? Well, your residence time may be too long where you're restricting your homogenized melt and the recovery time may exceed the cooling time where you're wasting precious cycle time. But how about my minimum shot size? What happens if I underutilize my injection unit? You may result with shot inconsistencies where the material ratio of the non-return valve to the shot size is too high. And what we mean by that is in the upper right-hand corner of this illustration, you'll see the non-return valve. And there's a certain amount of material that is needed to set that ring. And that material will have a high ratio to your shot size, which will result in inconsistent shot weights. So as the shot utilization goes down, the effect from the check valve on the material flow goes up. And you might also uh, result with residence time could be too long, resulting in degradation of your material that you see below, something like silver streaks in your material. But another good rule of thumb uh, to apply is what's called the screw factor diameter. And that's where you take the diameter of the screw and you apply it in a linear fashion. In such case, generally speaking, anything less than one times the diameter of your screw, you're gonna be in a dangerous zone. Whereas something between the one diameter and the third diameter of your screw in a linear fashion, you're gonna be in an okay zone. And anything over four times the diameter is gonna be back in the red zone. But generally speaking for minimum shot sizes, it's a good rule to stay above 20% of your shot capacity. So we also touched on our, in our introductory video using the supplier specifications. And any machine supplier has these available for you. And it's a very good idea to take your time and go through these specifications. And for the remainder of this video, we're gonna be using the injection unit side of the spec sheet. And in this case, we're gonna be focusing on the B screw. And for this B screw, you'll notice that it has 9,698 cubic centimeters of volumetric capacity. Volumetric capacity is truly the right way to spec out a machine and compare machine suppliers. And for this case, this B screw has 8,825 grams of material processable at 26,397,000 PSI. So you can see the B screw again has uh, 9,698, but that is using polystyrene. And if you notice over here, the machine specifications clearly call out the use of polystyrene, and this is often overlooked. And you'll notice over here that it has the melt factor of 0.91 grams per cubic centimeter. But let's say we're molding out of polypropylene. Polypropylene, has a melt factor of 0.73 grams per cubic centimeter. So as we apply that to the specification sheet, you would take the volumetric capacity of 9,698 cubic centimeters times the melt factor of 0.73 grams per cubic centimeter of polypropylene, and that would give you 7,079 grams of processable weight, not 8,825 grams. That's right, polystyrene spec versus a polypropylene spec 
there is a difference of 19.8%, nearly a 20% loss in your injection capacity. That is a major influence, especially when we're applying it to the 2080 rule. So in such a case, you might need to move up an entire injection unit to maintain the proper injection pressure, the proper screw recovery time, and proper residence time. So let's talk about some key takeaways from this video. The injection unit specs are just as important as clamp specs. Target a 20 to 80% shock capacity for your general purpose resins, but a 30 to 50% shock capacity for your engineered resins. And always remember to adjust your calculations for the right output factor of the material that you'll be running. And then adjust your specifications properly for the calculated shot size. So in the upcoming videos that we'll be doing, we'll be focusing on why the materials matter, the screw geometries and what you need to know, fast cycles and parallel motions, auxiliary equipment functions, and automation. We hope you've enjoyed this video series so far and that you continue to join us. And if you've got further questions, please feel free to reach out to us on the phone number on the screen, or you can contact me directly at my email below. We hope to see you next time. Thank you.